As part of the Rebound Buffalo, we're working to get you some answers about some of your COVID questions. There are many questions as well, and all week long we've heard from the top health leaders in Western New York in a series of roundtable discussions. Today, we wrap things up talking about one thing in particular that everyone wants to know. When will this pandemic end? 7 Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Proya is sharing what our local health leaders think. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. The COVID-19 vaccine is our ticket out of this pandemic. I mean, we've seen examples uh, from um, you know other parts of the world, uh, specifically Israel, where they've been very aggressive with their vaccine campaign. And right now, over 40% of their population has been uh, fully vaccinated. Right now in New York State, the governor's office says about half of adults 18 or older has received at least one dose of the vaccine. We're, we're not quite there yet, so the more more people that uh, agree and, and um, you know, make the choice to get vaccinated, um, the better place it will be in. And um, just in terms of seeing our COVID-19 numbers uh, decrease and be able to return to a new normal, whatever that is. However, because of the various um, um, mutant strands that are out there, we are very concerned about, um, you know, about the future of this uh, particular virus. And uh, as soon as we can get more individuals vaccinated throughout the world, not just the U.S., I think we could uh, have a better hold on uh, mitigating the, uh, the spread of this virus. And while the future is full of question marks, these public health directors are hopeful. You know, there's no crystal ball there, but ultimately I think as we continue to push towards uh, increased vaccinations, getting more people protected, you know, ultimately we can get back to, uh, you know, somewhat of our, our old normal while still uh, emphasizing some of these mitigation strategies we've been practicing for over the past year now. Olivia Proya, 7 Eyewitness News. Well, Olivia brought us this discussion all week long, so I actually wanted to go a little bit more in depth with her to get her take on what she's heard from our health leaders. Take a listen. Olivia, tell me why it's so important for somebody, a viewer in Western New York, to hear this. A lot of public health work is invisible. And I think it's important that we see what these departments are doing in addition to responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the different challenges that they're facing while they make sure that Western New York stays safe. One thing from your interview that really caught my attention was the idea that some of these budgets are being slashed and so much so they're having a hard time doing their essential jobs, which is managing public health. So where do we go from here and what's the conversation? So the big issue is public health departments were operating on extremely limited budgets before the pandemic. And one of the points that every single health director made was the state tax tasks us with doing so many different activities like STI monitoring, lead intake monitoring, water monitoring, water quality monitor monitoring, and then they don't give us the resources to do so. So then when the pandemic hit, they had to pull all the resources from those other programs and then put it towards the pandemic. And I mean, moving forward, Right now, they're at a point where they're trying to figure out how to go back to those original programs, but they're still tasked with so much. They still have to do contract tracing. They're still running testing. They're vaccinating. These departments are getting stretched to the max, and they don't even know how to get back to what they were originally tasked with doing before the pandemic. They really are grateful for volunteers because... A lot of these county health departments are small. Like I said, they're stretched to the max. So when they have volunteers coming in and helping out where they're retired ER doctors, retired nurses, nurses that get off a shift at the hospital and come help work out at the vaccine distribution center. It's, it's really interesting how it's not just the county health departments making all of this happen. It's an entire community.